Well, hello, and welcome back to the Joe Grotesque Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Joe Grotesque. And before I get started with anything else, I wanted to clarify something really quick. The Joe Grotesque Podcast is not replacing my regular content on YouTube. It's just something additional that I'm doing. That aside, I also wanted to take a moment to talk about Generation Rad. Now, if you've watched my videos, you might have noticed the little logo that spins in at the very beginning. And a lot of people are like, what the crap is that? And Generation Rad is a collaborative YouTube group, kind of a network of sorts, composed of other YouTubers into geek culture all around the world. If you want to learn more about it and the other channels that are involved, go to www.generationrad.com. Okay, moving right along, I want to get into another story. Now, this is a story I've tried to talk about before. Now, this is the closest thing in my life that's happened that's anything close to a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory story. Now, this is a story I've been wanting to tell for over eight years now. I really have no idea why I've taken so long to tell it. It may be because it's the longest story I've ever had to tell. I did originally try to start telling the story in a video series I made a couple of years ago, and I just kind of felt like the videos came off as maybe pretentious, so I never finished said video series, nor did I tell the story in great detail in those videos that I actually completed. So this is going to be another attempt telling this story in full to the best of my ability. Before I go any further, though, I have to mention the reason any of this even happened was, well, not to boast, but because I'm one of the biggest Ninja Turtle fans on the planet. At one point in my life, I had an enormous Turtles collection. I still have a pretty big one, but at the time, I could confidently say mine was among the top ten on the planet. And many years ago, before YouTube was what it is now... I would post collection videos every now and again. This was around 2008, 2009. One of my videos was placed on the front page of the Ninja Turtles 25th anniversary website. This is what I'm assuming grabbed the attention of the people that contacted me. So one day, sometime early March of 2011, I received an email notifying me that I had received a message through YouTube. It was from a guy named Phil. I'm withholding his last name for safety reasons. He asked me if I might be interested in participating in something regarding the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at Nickelodeon Animation Studios in Burbank, California. My first impression was that this had to be a scam of some sort. That wall of distrust that some of us feel, that distrust in humankind, it went up really fast because, well, past experiences with scumbags. On top of that old adage, if something's too good to be true, it probably isn't true. That kept beating inside my head, but I wrote him back anyway with something along the lines of, if this is legit, feel free to send me some details. And he wrote me back and assured me it was a legitimate endeavor, but he didn't give me too many details. He did, however, ask me to contact him and left a number along with his hours of availability. At first I thought about ignoring it, but then thought, well, I can always just hang up on him. So I caught him the next day and spoke with him and he gave me the skinny on what Nickelodeon was planning with this event. I was asked a battery of questions about my fandom and my thoughts on what the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles should be what my thoughts on a new live-action Turtles movie should be like, and uh, just other questions in general, like what my memories were of watching past Nickelodeon shows, things like that. So, more phone calls followed, including a conference call with what I believe was with representatives from Viacom and uh, some Nickelodeon execs. A few days went by, I didn't hear anything, no emails, no anything. Now, in the past, I had done phone interviews and Skype interviews with TV companies, and I just figured they had decided to pass on me, but eventually I got another call saying, congratulations! No, it wasn't anything like that. They said, congratulations, Nickelodeon has chosen you to participate, something to that effect. I was like, that's great! 
After giving some additional info, like my mailing address, etc., I was told I would be contacted again with a follow-up call. The next day I was at work, and the first part of my work day was over, and I hadn't heard from Nickelodeon. So that doubt started to set in again. Then I was in the middle of working on a client. Oh, I'm a tattoo artist, by the way, for those of you that don't already know that. And I hear my phone ring, so I told my client, uh, I gotta take this call, it might be Nickelodeon. And my client reacted with something like, Say what? So I took out my gloves and I picked up my phone, and sure enough, it was a lady from Nickelodeon. She let me know that my plane tickets would be sent out that week, and she said the staff was looking forward to meeting me. I know it wasn't genuine kindness, but from a professional standpoint and as a formality, it's nicer to hear, I guess. She asked me if I was hungry, and of course I said, I can eat. She asked me if I was at home or at work. I told her I was at work. She asked for my work address, so I gave her that. She asked if I liked pizza, so of course I answered yes. And with another formal goodbye, the call was over. So I just kind of assumed that they called one of the local pizza places near me uh, to have it delivered to my work. But when the pizza actually arrived, it was brought to me by a guy in like this regal business suit. And the pizza was in a Ninja Turtles pizza box. So I thanked the delivery guy, whoever he was, and brought the pizza to the back office. When I opened up the pizza box, though, I noticed there was a plastic sleeve on the underside of the lid. It was an invitation to Burbank. Super cool, but also kind of creepy at the same time, because I couldn't figure how they were able to do that. Unfortunately, the little plastic sleeve on the inside that was holding the invitation ended up ruining the pizza. The pizza was so hot that it slightly melted the plastic, and its essence spread out all over the pizza. It literally tasted like I was eating a plastic pizza, so I tossed out the pizza, and, you know, I kept the box, of course. A few days after I received my plane tickets and my flight itinerary in the mail, they were printed on a metallic silver paper with the total round-trip flight cost reading $666. So being a metalhead, I was kind of like, awesome, but at the same time, it kind of gave it a more creepy vibe again. Now prior to leaving the Burbank, I hit some of the Turtles forums that I frequented, and uh, I found out that a few other people on the forums were also going, so it made things a little bit easier and helped further verify that it was a legitimate thing. Not that the plane tickets didn't already. So skip ahead about a week or so uh, to the day I left. My dad dropped me off at the airport. I had to take a six-hour red-eye flight to LAX. I slept the entire flight, so it didn't seem long at all. It went by really fast. So I get to LAX, and walking out of the airport, I see a tiny man holding up a sign with my name on it, and it was the limo driver. So I get in the limo. He lets me know there's a bottle of water in the armrest if I'm thirsty, so I take advantage of the offer. And uh, I end up partaking in the tiniest bottle of water I've ever had. Anyway, so he drops me off at a hotel that's owned by Nickelodeon. When I walk into my room, I find this round gift box with a manhole-shaped lid on it with the new Turtles logo. And it was full with a bunch of snacks and goodies and some really cool stuff. You know, looking back in hindsight, though, that time I was there was the day prior to the event. So I had almost an entire day to go out and partake in other things within the area. I had never been to California before, but for whatever reason, I was freaked out by the idea of, well, if I leave the room, uh, I might like get lost or something and not make it back to my room and not make it to the event and just negative Nancy stuff that I really hate myself for now. So anyway, I stayed at the hotel the whole time. And come to find out, uh, several people that I knew from the forums were there, and I met up with them, and that's pretty much how I spent the rest of my night, is just hanging out with those people, which was fun. So the next morning, I find out there's only going to be like 12 of us involved in this thing. So with me and those that were staying at the hotel, we all get on a bus, and we head on down to Nickelodeon Animation Studios. So we get there, and it's got this gate guarding it, and these men in black suits... Uh, running security. I know it's different now, but at the time, the animation studio's building was really cool. They had a bunch of 
characters like spongebob and stuff on the wall surrounding it we walk in through the front gate and then there we're told we kind of have to uh forfeit all of our luggage and our cell phones so i knew we were going to be in for some really top secret ish the first place we go is into this large room there's a podium and a tiny stage and seats spread out for us all to sit in uh, there was also a projection screen we were given an introduction by the vice president of Nickelodeon Animation Studios. Then we were all asked to introduce ourselves. Then we got to meet various people that were involved. We were shown a short animatic that was a segment from an episode they were working on, as well as still shots and concept art, things like that. Quality-wise, uh, and on an artistic level, everything looked awesome. But I began to kind of start fuming at the number of changes they made with some of the characters. Like, they made Raphael one of the shorter turtles. They made Donatello way taller than all the other turtles. Made Mikey smaller and more cutesy, more like a Nickelodeon character. The fact that April was a teenager really bugged me. And the fact they made Splinter like six feet tall and made him tower over all of the other turtles when he was more like a Yoda character in the past. It kind of felt like the only one that kept his integrity was Leonardo. But I think one of the biggest aesthetic changes to me was the fact that they gave him like big bulky feet with two slits that gave them three toes. I don't know why it was such a big deal, but those old two-toed turtle feet, say that five times fast, I started to realize how iconic those were, to me anyway. So at this point I was kind of annoyed to say the least. They had messed with my boys. But then they kind of appeased me momentarily because they did a table read with the voice cast. And, of course, we found out Rob Paulson would be voicing Donatello. Rob Paulson is awesome. He's actually one of my heroes. After the table read, we all got to go outside and have lunch with the voice cast, which was also really cool because I got to meet Jason Biggs, the guy best known for the American Pie movies. And also Greg Sipes, who's the voice of Beast Boy on Teen Titans. And they were all like super nice guys, super down to earth, and I really enjoyed that part. When we returned indoors, we were given a tour of the animation studios. That was really cool, because I'm a big fan of animation, obviously. So it was really neat to see animation cells from older shows like Ren and Stimpy and Rocco's Modern Life and getting to see some of the shows being made. After that, we went back to the meeting room and we were able to do a Q&A session with the show's director, which was followed up by a showcase of toy prototypes by some representatives from Playmates Toys, where we got to peruse some upcoming Turtles toys, both new and uh, they were actually showing off the, the, the classic edition Turtles at that time too. And we got to give our thoughts on all of that. Finally, we were split up into groups of four and brought into separate rooms for a focus chat to discuss our thoughts on everything we saw that day. Needless to say, I had my grievances. I wouldn't say it all fell on deaf ears, but I don't think they took too much of what I had to say into account. At first, I really didn't even want to speak too honestly because... I'm generally a nice guy, and I felt like it might come off as an insult after all the hospitality they had given us. But, you know, they were in control and owned a franchise I held more dearly than just about any other franchise in existence. But they really encouraged me to speak my mind anyway, so I did. I went home appreciative of the experience, but a bit frustrated and scared over the future of the TMNT. I expressed my thoughts with everyone on the online forums only to be shut down and ridiculed by the vast majority of members. Uh, I guess maybe me saying something like, and you call yourselves true Ninja Turtles fans really didn't rub anyone the right way. So I'm a bit sorry for that. So that's about the time I stopped using forums. Once the show was released the following year, I tried to give it a chance. In the end, it wasn't terrible. I watched the first season... I didn't love it and I didn't hate it, at least not as much as some previous short-lived incarnations. It wasn't until the final two seasons that I found it very watchable, and now in present day in comparison to the current show Rise of the TMNT, it's like a friggin' masterpiece. I'm sorry to all you fans out there, that's just my own personal opinion. 
So that's the gist of the story. If you've made it this far, bless you. I hope you found it remotely entertaining, or at least it helped you fall asleep or something. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you guys once again for listening. You're beautiful. Until next time, thanks for listening. Take care. And I'm out. Is this thing still on? Out. <laughs> it's a slow Joe show. Finally, I made it on the radio player thing. Hey, what's this button do?